Hey everyone, John Chow here from JohnChow.com and today I have an unboxing and review of the new CoCard Mark III hardware wallet by Cronkite. Let's get started. So this is the uh, CoCard by Cronkite and this is a Bitcoin only hardware wallet. Uh, Bitcoin is always support, it does not support any other cryptocurrency. So if you're looking for a wallet that can hold all your crypto and you have other things besides Bitcoin, you're going to have to find another wallet. So, but if you're looking for a Bitcoin only wallet, the, the code card by CoinKite is probably the best and most secure Bitcoin wallet you will ever, you will ever find and ever use. So uh, let's begin by opening up the packaging. This is where, what it comes in. I say it doesn't look doesn't look very fancy, uh, not a great Ubi experience, but this is done specifically for security. And the, what CoinCard try to do with their Bitcoin wallet is to try to eliminate or reduce all the possible attack vectors that can that can hit the wallet, and so you know attackers can try and get your get your money out of it. And the first thing is with the packaging. To take out the hard wallet, the first thing is you need to peel off this, uh, the red tab to take it out. But once you peel it, the first security thing you're going to see is as you peel it, is you notice that a whole bunch of voids just show up. And this is to stop supply chain attacks. So they want to make sure that the corn kite that leaves the factory that gets to you has not been tampered with. So let's take a look at the wallet here. Let's take it out. Take a look at the wallet and see what's inside. So we have here, so we have, this is the card to write down your C word, uh, your password pin, and the anti-phishing code, which I'll get to in a little bit. So, and also here, there's a, a code card sticker, okay? And this is the wallet itself. And uh, the reason the wallet is translucent or transparent so you can see the inside, it's another security feature. This way you can inspect the wallet itself to make sure you know nothing has been physically or changed on it. So if you see you know some big blotches or whatever, then you know the wallet might have been tampered with, right? So that's a, another security feature: transparent casing, so you can see the inside to make sure it hasn't been tampered with. In addition to, of course, the anti-tampering bag. Also, you notice the bag has a serial number on there. When you first fire up the corn kite, it will show you a serial number. And if that number does not match this number, do not use the card. It has been changed. That's basically, so this is the all uh, security that's made to make sure that when this wallet leaves the factory and gets to you, all these security measures make sure that this is a factory fresh, unaltered, untampered with code card. Very secure against supply chain attack. The next attack vector is the uh, what's known as an evil maid attack. And evil maid is where someone, uh, a evil maid, someone you know, might take your coin card and swap it for another one. Then this other one uh, basically is a fake one. It's just a transmitter. So they're hoping you enter your pin, and the pin will then trans, and then it will transmit the pin to the evil maid, and the evil maid will then enter the pin onto your coin card and access your fund. All right. Now to prevent that. Uh, it uses a two-stage PIN system. When you first set up the code card, you will be asked to enter the first part of the PIN, which is anywhere from uh, two to six digits. Recommend you use six digits. So you punch in six digits, and then it will give you two anti-phishing code words. So it will show you two code words on the display. Write the code words down, and once you write it down, you hit continue, and then you can then you can enter the the last part of the, your of your pin again two to six digit recommend six digit so you can do a twelve digit pin and that's what they recommend they recommend twelve digit pin you enter the first six digit it will give you those anti phishing code words and if those code words matches the set the first time you set it up then you can hit the uh, checkbox check mark here and then continue entering the second part of the pin and then you will log into the wallet itself if after entering the, uh, the first pin and you see the code word does not match what was first set up, 
it means someone swapped out your, your code card with something else. Do not enter the second part of the pin and that prevents the evil made attack. The setup process is quite involved. Uh, it's, it's typical wallet, it's like a typical Bit39 wallet. The first time you set it up, you'll be asked to enter the pin. You'll get the, uh, the two anti phishing word in the second part of the pin. And then, after, and then you'll be given a choice of uh, restoring a wallet or starting a new wallet. When you start a new wallet, it will give you 24, 24 word uh, 24 word C phrase. Uh, DC phrases are based on a Bit39 standard. It'll give you 24 words pulled from a list of 2048 words. How do you know that the C phrases generated is truly random? Like if you don't trust the true randomness of the C word that it generates, you can add more randomness. You see, Cronkite's um, model is don't trust, verify. And how it does that is number one, all the software is open source. So you can verify all the codes in there that there's no back door, like uh, with proprietary wallets, like some, uh, say from, from Ledger, uh, that software is all proprietary. You don't really know that Ledger may have put a back door in it because of some government subpoena or whatever. With Cronkite, because the software is all open source, anyone can look at the codes and stuff and see and verify that everything in there is all legit. And the same thing, with the, uh, the hardware, all the hardware is open source and Coin could actually release a white paper that shows all the, all the stuff they use to create this. So if you want to, you can create your own, your own code card if you want. You can add more randomness onto it by using a set of dice. So you use a dice rolls. So you, in the setup, you hit the number four, after when it shows you the keyword, you don't you don't want to use those keywords. You hit the number four, and that will add dice rolls. And what you do is you just roll the dice and enter one to six. You went like you roll the first dice, you get a one, you enter one. You roll the second dice, you get a six, you enter six, and so forth and so forth. You keep rolling the dice. They recommend you roll it one hundred times, and that will add more randomness to the uh, to the seed words. And after you finish rolling, say hundred times, two hundred times, or as many times you want, you hit the uh, check mark, and then it will give you a new set of keywords. Based on, the, based on this original random, uh, random generator plus your, plus your dice rolls and give you the new C word. This way you can assure that the words it creates that, that, that generates the private key is truly random. The uh, other thing that makes this the most secure hardware wallet available is instead of storing your seed phrase, instead of storing your private key, instead of storing that in uh, regular memory or regular or just the MCU, it stores it onto a secure element chip. What makes this unique is that generally when you're using a secure element chip, uh, the chip is proprietary and therefore is not open source. Like uh, the ledger uses a, a secure chip, a secure element to store the, the key, but the software is proprietary. And then on the other end, we have the treasure, which are open source for the hardware and for the software but it cannot store, it doesn't use the Q element because that would make it proprietary. It, so it stores your, your key and your C phrase onto the MCU, which is hackable. Code card, what they've done is they managed to use a secure element to store your secrets and keep it all open source. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. Another great security feature of the code card is this is totally air gap. It's never connected to the internet. When you first set it up, you just use a battery. So and this is a USB battery. So first time you plug it in using a USB battery, so it's never connected to the internet. First time you plug it in, you will see another security feature. Let me plug it in and show you. Doesn't seem to be working. All right, so plug in. You notice it's red. It's now verifying the BIOS and it goes green. So it verifies that this is uh, direct from the factory. If this green light does not show up, do not use the card, do not use it, right? So all these skidia, so the first time uh, you basically, it tells you some information. Uh, the screen is very, very small and, on, and really, unless you have 20, 20 vision, it's, it's quite small. I mean, I wish the screen was bigger, but uh, it, it is what it is. Uh, but it, yeah, I have to use reading glasses to be able to read this, but so basically it tells you, uh, I guess this is your terms of service, click okay to continue. And then you click okay here. And then, so now it gives you the code. 
So you gotta make sure the code matches the code here and it doesn't match again, you know, don't, don't use it. So you see the code matches so I can, so then I can continue. Yeah. And then now I can choose to, uh, I can choose to set up my pin. So I can go here, I just go and basically that's set up was you, you select and ask you to choose the pin and then it'll give you, then after you set the first part of the pin, it'll give you the two, the two uh, anti-phishing words and then set the rest of the pin. And after that, it'll give you the 24 word C phrases. Uh, you can accept those words as is, or you can add more dice rows to continue creating more randomness. And then after that, uh, your code card is ready to go and ready to use. And to make it more secure, if you want, uh, after you set up the C phrase, you can put a pass phrase onto the C phrase to further protect it. And that'll give you, that'll give you more security as well. To use the, uh, the code card, uh, instead of Concat creating their own software like, uh, like Treasure or Ledger does, what, the, what they do is they, they make it compatible with uh, software wallets that you can, that's freely available that you can download that's open source. So you can use this with say the Wasabi wallet or the Electron wallet. Those are the two most popular ones. So I use it with Wasabi. And to maintain complete air gap so that this wallet never, never touch the internet. So what it does is you use it as an SD card. So you plug an SD card in here and then a Concite will create a skeleton wallet with the public key onto the SD card. And the skeleton wallet contains your public keys, which you can, which you, then you can use to receive money. So you take the SD card, you plug that into your computer, fire up Wasabi, and then that will create your receiving address to receive Bitcoin. So people can receive Bitcoin for you and your private key is still in here, air gap, never connected to the internet. And you can still receive money, check your balance using Wasabi because that has your public key, which is fine, as long as you don't have your private key. Now to send money, you have two choices. Uh, you can A, USB, plug it into the computer and then send money with Wasabi and they'll ask you, do you wish to send money? You check yes. And then the private key will sign the six, will sign the transaction, it will send the money. But if you do that, you're connecting it to the internet, right? It's no longer air gap. If you want to keep the code card totally air gap and still send Bitcoin, you can do that. This is the first Bitcoin wallet that supports partially signed Bitcoin transactions. And Wasabi supports that. So what, it, what, what you do is in your Wasabi wallet, you build a transaction saying, I want to send money to this address and then Wasabi will save that transaction onto the SD card. You take out the SD card, you plug it into the code card and then you, yeah, you fire it up and you click sign and you look at the transaction, it will read the transaction for the SD card and it's ready to sign, you click, you check, the, you, check, you check it and then it will sign the transaction. After it signs it, you remove the SD card plug it back into Wasabi, and then you broadcast the transmission onto the public ledger, and boom, you sent the money, and your private key is still in the code code, never touching the internet. So, uh, this is by far my favorite Bitcoin hardware wallet. So if you're a Bitcoin maximist, if you have a lot of Bitcoin, you wanna keep it safe and secure, this is the hardware wallet I recommend. While some people say that it's only Bitcoin only, some people might see that as a disadvantage. I actually see it as an advantage because by only supporting Bitcoin, they don't have to add in support for any other coin. They can concentrate on making Bitcoin totally and completely secure. I mean, they've done everything possible to reduce or eliminate all the possible attack vectors, the supply chain attack, the evil made attack, you can even set up a dummy pin, like it's called a brick pin, a dummy pin. So in case uh, someone kidnaps you and say, unlock this wallet, you can enter a pin that will brick, that will brick it. Basically, it'll just turn into a brick. Uh, another security feature, only get 13 attempts. If you get the pins wrong 13 times, it bricks. Like it doesn't reset, it, it bricks. Like it, it's dead. You cannot use it anymore. Totally brick after 13 attempts. And it cannot be reset because the, uh, the instruction to brick itself is in the secure element. So you, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, if you're looking for the um, most secure and best Bitcoin wallet available, I definitely recommend this. Uh, 
go to uh, coldcardwallet.com. That's not an affiliate link. I'm not making any money from it. So I'm just, I, I just only endorsing this product. Coldcardwallet.com. And I believe it's $119. And some people might say that 119 bucks, but you know, if you're securing thousands, tens of thousands of dollars of Bitcoin, you know, hell, buy, buy three. I buy a three pack. Oh, that's another thing too. It also supports multi-sig. So if you want, you can like uh, require more than one code card to confirm the transaction. Like if you buy a, a, a three pack, and you can, so you can say, at least two code cards must sign before the transaction sends. So after you do the partially signed transaction, you, you plug it, you plug the SD card into, into this code card, you can yes, and then that's half signed, you take it out, you get the other card, you plug into the second card, go yes on that card as well, and then, 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 it, sends it, and then it sends the money, right? So, you know, for multiple party, multiple sigs, so, you know, you hold one card, another trusted party hold another card, and then the third card is put somewhere in the deposit box in case either one of you loses a, loses a card. So you can see that third card to activate. So you can set it up up to like, I think 12 code cards, like require 12 cards to do a, to do a transmission if you want, right? So kind of crazy, but yeah, you can do that. All right, so, uh, and that, lastly, this is made and designed in Canada. That's right, Toronto, Canada, so it's right here. Made in Canada, they actually make it in Canada, it's not made in China, so it's a, it's a fairly small operation. Basically, they make everything right there. Uh, they pack it in the fact, in their facility in Canada. They put the serial number, make everything the same, and then they ship it out. So very, another, very less chance of supply chain attacks. Right? So, all right. So that is my uh, un unwrapping and review of the cold card wallet Mark III by CoinKite. Uh, if you're a Bitcoin maximus, you want to hold Bitcoin, keep it secure for a long, long time, completely air gap, never touch the internet, you should pick one of these up. John Chow from JohnChow.com. Thank you very much for watching. Give me a thumbs if you like that. Please like and share my video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys next time.